still reading through this book. Look familiar? Henrik Rudolf Hertz. In his tragically short life, he lived from, you know, 1857 to 1894. Wow, 37 years old. Huh, that means I have seven more years. But anyways. <laughs> in, a in his tragically short life, the German physicist and engineer Henrik Hertz, H-E-R-T-Z, laid the foundation of the greatest of all revolution revolutions in human communications. In a series of brilliant experiments, he discovered the existence of radio waves and showed how they could be transmitted and received. Within 50 years of his discovery, radio had become the first means of immediate global communication. Under Hemholtz, this is von Hemholtz, the same guy with, uh, that was working with Kelvin, I believe. Uh, <laughs> Under Hemholtz's guidance, Hertz made excellent progress and by 1883 had secured an academic post in the University of Kiel, where he devoted himself to research. Now, here's what happened. Uh, here's a picture of uh, Hertz. There he is. Well, here's what happened. He was, uh, he was working with oscillating electric currents. I'll go ahead and read this out all the way. That way, you know, I don't misinterpret it. The research needed for Berlin Prize involved the study of oscillating electric currents. In 1888, Hertz had a brilliant insight linking the idea of oscillating charge and the predictions of Maxwell's famous electromagnetic equations. The apparatus Hertz had built consisted of a circuit connecting two metal spheres. An electric current passing backward and forward in the circuit caused each sphere alternately to become charged. Here's the circuit. Right there. That's the source of energy, that little battery um, symbol, and then you have the two metal spheres. And then radio waves passing to the other two metal spheres. So a resonance uh, takes hold, a specific resonance. Now, I think uh, the idea of resonance is also covered in this book. Go ahead and connect the ideas. You know, when you tap, when you tap a, uh, a fork and another fork is at the same frequency, it doesn't matter. The resonance will continue on and that other fork will start vibrating. But if the resonance is off, you have, you tap that fork, and then that fork won't vibrate, so there's no resonance. It's the same thing with uh, Mr. Hertz's discovery here. His resonance of two metal spheres, which were oscillating electrical current between the two, were transmitting a radio frequency across, of a, across a room. Now, he, here's, here, I'll go ahead and continue this uh, talk. He realized that by chance he had devised a circuit that could produce a constantly oscillating charge. Was it possible, he wondered, that the spark leaped backward and forward across the spheres. Invisible waves of radiation were pulsating throughout his laboratory. And here's what he did. He was in his laboratory. To test the idea, Hertz constructed a simple wire loop with an air gap at one point. So he had a wire loop, and then there was a gap of air. If an oscillating current could create electromagnetic radiation, he reasoned that the radiation might in turn create an oscillating current in his wire loop. Moving the loop to various points in his laboratory, Hertz found, to his excitement, that not only could he detect the radiation by a small spark that jumped the air gap of the loop, but he could map the intensity and the shape of the radiation by watching how the strength of the spark varied with position. He worked out that the wavelength of the radiation was just over two feet, a million times greater than the wavelength of visible light. So he had discovered a wavelength. So the electromagnetic frequency was radiating <clears throat> in a wavelength of the distance of two feet, which is a giant wave of energy. <laughs> And currently, 
we can use these waves of uh, energy to study atmospheric phenomenon as well as we can use it for astronomy. It's radio astronomy. Um, we can use it to study quasars and radio galaxies and those are in the theory I'm drawing up the places where actual fusion is taking place you know where all the synchrotron radiation is coming from you know and pulsars and things like that because the oscillating frequencies are in the radio in the radio uh, the radio uh, range and that is basically it basically means that this guy laid the foundation for discovering where actual fusion takes place literally if you put it all if you put it all together so this guy led to Marconi doing the radio frequency transmissions which then led to using telescopes to that you know received at that oscillating frequency the radio waves coming from outer space which then led to the discovery of quasars which then I'm drawing up the understanding that they're the source of fusion reactions and galaxy birth you know in quasars such as 3C273 I think that's one of the quasars or radio galaxies but literally it's like a step to step to step to step to step over many 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 years because this uh, discovery was made uh, in 1888 I think 1888 doesn't quite pin it down but uh, that's when it that's about when it was happening when all this was going down but Henrik Rudolf Hertz one one very very important person and will go down in my book as being somebody to uh, look into more and I'll try to find some of his writings to see where his mind was going with this stuff to see if he had any uh, alternative understandings besides Maxwell's stuff now I know a lot of the a lot of the vogue was in uh, studying Maxwell's electromagnetic equations but I also believe that there's probably something wrong with those. I have to look more into that. Today is August 3rd, 2015. Everybody have a good day.